All right, hello everybody. Uh, today we're just going to do a quick, kind of a quick drawing, quick doodle. I'll probably spend 30, 40 minutes on this, maybe an hour, I don't know. But I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. I use Sketchbook, uh, the Enterprise Edition from Autodesk. I do pay a monthly subscription for that. I think it's about 15 bucks. But it's a, it's a pretty powerful tool. I, I know a lot of people are... Uh, uh, partial of Photoshop uh, it, It's whatever you're comfortable with using I I've just learned to use uh, sketchbook. So that's what I'm sticking with. I don't want to start all over and uh, I'm I'm a lot more into the Drawing than the manipulating I do go back and touch up uh, Some colors and contrast and stuff like that uh, when I finish these drawings uh, but I'm not really in the cutting lines and stretching them and manipulating them. I just kind of draw what I draw. Uh, the other thing I do like about Sketchbook, and uh, Photoshop may have this too, but there are a ton, uh, hundreds and hundreds of custom brushes that people have made that you can download straight from the Autodesk website. And those brushes, I, I really like to use those. Uh, the textures in them are, are pretty awesome, and I can do a lot of things with those. Uh, you can also make your own custom brushes on here and uh, haven't really got into that part of it yet I'm just kind of using what's out there Halloween being Halloween coming up here soon we're going to do a creepy painting and if you've ever followed my art on deviant art or on uh, Instagram you know that that's pretty much what I'm about anyway uh, here lately I've done a lot of uh, Pennywise drawings from it and uh, kind of going to give that a break for a little while I think today we'll just do some kind of a, a good old abstract kind of skull looking thing so well, enough rambling enough talk let's get this thing going alright so one thing you'll notice is I really love using the symmetry uh, it really helps me get these done fast and and for whatever reason I'm not uh, I'm not one of these guys that gets real obsessed over every minute detail and line I just kind of like to get get the art done get it out of my head and get it onto the page so a lot of the stuff I post uh, I don't really know if uh, some people would even post some of the things I do because they're not perfect and uh, just for me personally I don't really care about that part of it I just like drawing and getting stuff out there doing neat things and uh, I'm sorry if it's kind of hard to tell here at first because it's kind of light uh, I like to start off light and carve it back in uh, but we're going to do kind of a a bird type thing here. All right. So one of the things I like to do, let me demonstrate this for you here real quick. I'm going to come in just a little heavier, a little darker. One of my favorite techniques. As I lay down this base like this and I like to go back in with an eraser and uh, make sure this is set right and then carve it back out that's way way too strong there we go and you can get some really cool looking effects by doing this uh, you know, you can kind of make things look ragged and torn a little bit. Give it that really nice kind of creepy texture. Almost, I don't know, bubbly, ripped, uh, however you want to say it, tattered look. Uh, and I always like my drawings to... Uh, to look heavy like they got some weight to them and uh, 
my group on DeviantArt that I created. I actually called it uh, Heavy Digital. I kind of uh, I was a big fan of Heavy Metal Magazine when I was a kid. So nowadays most things are digital. So I thought Heavy Digital would be a good word. A good title for the page. And uh, I've got a few followers on there, a few few members, I shouldn't say followers, they're members of my group. We're all kind of like-minded people. My, uh, my buddy who runs a, uh, a channel on YouTube here, uh, you couldn't see me he does uh like dumpster dry diving and and uh kind of trash salvaging and stuff and, and uh, he recently got monetized so i'm real proud of him real happy for him he's he's got a a lot of people that enjoy his videos so. if he's watching this one man good job Maybe someday I can achieve that kind of greatness. And you know the the whole uh, art thing is kind of a weird deal. A lot of people love it. A lot of people, uh, you know, compliment you on it and stuff. But it's real hard to market any kind of. Uh, actual business or anything off of, of being an artist and I guess it's kind of there's some circles of the art community where you're almost like looked down upon if, if you think you should charge for some of your artwork and and it's just crazy I, uh, I think I've made one solid dollar off of my art since I've started doing it online and kind of having these channels and my my pages uh, but I was really proud to get that one dollar. Uh, I guess that means I am officially a professional artist now. So Too bad the dollar was in a digital currency or I would have uh, hung it up somewhere. Been thinking about doing like some commissions on Fiverr or something like that, but uh, I don't know it, it's just super competitive out there and it's not that uh, I worry about my art being or not being good enough uh, it's just hard to market this stuff because somebody will undercut you every time so my strategy is just kind of I want to get my artwork out there and uh, if folks like it if they like my style well then I may I may get a little business someday, but uh, if they don't, that's okay too, because this is just my art for me. Yeah, and, and I guess that's kind of the commission part of this too, is uh, some people are looking for really specific things. Uh, you know, I... I've creeped up a few Pokemon and stuff like that for people, uh, but I just always kind of retain my style on it. Sometimes that works out great, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, uh, I, I think my, my kind of artwork is an acquired taste, if you like this kind of stuff. But, and uh, the other thing, some people think I maybe uh, exaggerate a little bit but I can tell you most of the time when I start one of these drawings like this right here I really have no idea what I'm gonna do with it and I have no idea how it's gonna turn out I don't have a plan I just start drawing and see what pops out now does that make me a good artist or a bad artist that is only for me to decide and I like it so 
not my style. Some people are really meticulous, like uh, they're really uh, obsessed with everything being perfect. And I just, I don't know. I think, especially with digital art, I think it takes away from some digital art because uh, of course you can sit here and make your digital art perfect I mean you can you can spend days and days and I, I could go in here pixel by pixel and and make everything perfectly uh, perfect uh, but I don't want to do that I want to uh, I think it loses some of the feeling when you get that uh, meticulous with everything now, I'm not saying that it's bad uh, but for me, for my style, I don't like it. I, I, I just want to let things flow and, and see what happens. Uh, some of the some of the coolest things that I've done that I enjoy are uh, really random. Just I will just start with some random shapes and carve something out of it. And I almost feel like that's that's what my artwork is. Is uh, I'm I'm almost more of a a, a sculptor than a uh, a painter or a drawer or illustrator I, I like to find the raw material and the shapes and then just carve something out of it like I said I have no idea where this is going uh, there's probably a few of you out there if you're watching this you're screaming at me because you see something that I don't see that would be really cool and, and I get it uh, when I watch the the uh, the people do the uh, abstract acrylic pours uh, that got me inspired to start doing my own pours because I would be watching their video and I would see something like I'm like oh my god there's a face right there there's a shape that would be so cool there's a whole dragon there's a you know whatever and uh, then they would go ahead and tilt the whole thing so they could cover their whole canvas because they're they're following their technique and so I started doing a few. Uh, I've got a few of those videos out there too on YouTube, and I think mine are just a little different because I I'm actually trying to carve some some kind of a shape out of it. All right. I think if I keep on with this, I'm going to end up going too far. So. So we got kind of our basic shape there, and uh, I did that with the, uh, it's got a Copic marker, simulator, emulator, whatever you want to call it, uh, and I really like those on Sketchbook. I mean, they're really good. They blend really well. So uh, there was one custom brush that I started with, and then I was touching that up with a, with a Copic, and it still looks a little rough right now, but we're fixing to go. Um, I'm going to use a a uh it's an oil paint brush simulator emulator whatever you want to call it so it's an oil paint brush and we're going to keep this black and white just to kind of keep it simple uh but now i'm going to start adding some abstract to it uh some designs and we'll just see what happens where we go uh, and i really really enjoy these oil brushes and uh, by the way I use an XP pen tablet I, I don't have a big giant Wacom $600 tablet this is an $89 uh, XP pen and I really for the money if, if you're just kind of getting into this stuff and, and you don't have a whole lot of money to spend on this stuff uh, I, I really think XP pen is the way to go because they make some awesome tablets that are fairly cheap I mean they've got a couple of high dollar ones too but for me and for what I'm doing I don't really need that I just need something that's accurate and the pressure points on these things are uh, really good so I'll demonstrate for you so there's there's a light mark if I press down hard you know 
Uh, and it depends on which way, which direction you're going, how it blends out, what it does. And the uh, the stylus on mine is also passive, which means that I, I don't have any batteries in the stylus. And I think every time I get into one of these, I start talking about this tablet. And uh, that's really because I like it that much. It, it's a really good tablet. Really enjoy working with this. Uh, soon, I've got a bunch of junk piled up in my, my little painting studio, but uh, soon I'm going to get back on my traditional artwork, uh, get the old acrylics out again because I really enjoyed that. Uh, somehow, some way, life kind of got away from me there and I let my studio get all filled with junk and but uh, we're gonna we're gonna dig it out and get back into that stuff so with all these brushes uh, the coolest thing about them is that they really respond well to the pressure on your tablet so if you've got any kind of a decent tablet and and believe me you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on a tablet uh, there's not a whole lot of difference uh, you're not going to buy a thousand dollar tablet and all of a sudden start drawing better. Uh, but the, uh, what I was saying is that about these custom brushes is they're really, really responsive in this program to the pressure. And uh, I think you can kind of see how well that that works with these oil uh, brushes and that's why I like to use them all right yeah that's wrong As you can see with the uh, with the oil brushes on here, uh, the details start coming out. It starts getting sharper. Starts looking more like something. Uh, and I can't sit here and tell you what this actually is. I I don't know. Some kind of a I don't know if it's a bird, alien, whatever. I, we're just going with it. All right. I feel like there might be a little something right there. okay and the layers are are really good and they're really responsive and interactive on this uh program too and uh don't if you if you ever start getting into digital artwork i cannot express to you the importance of using layers like you can save an entire piece just by using your layers so this will back up uh, and I'm not sure how many uh, moves or how many actions it will back up but you can back out of this quite a bit like like if you make a bad line or you just don't like the direction it's going you can back up quite a bit on this but you can only back up so far it is not infinite you know you, you can't revert it all the way back to the beginning so uh, that's where your layers come in uh, because if you keep everything layered, uh, so like if I just looked at this the stuff I've been doing right here, these lines, if I just decided I didn't like them all, I would just turn that layer off and then they're gone. Now they're back. Now they're gone. So that could potentially save your entire work just by using some layers. So I'm just, uh, just lessons learned the hard way from me. Because I've lost a few. I just screwed it up. Couldn't back all the way out where I wanted. So uh, I just lost it. Alright, so. And the other thing with the uh, layers is. 
if I wanted to put something behind this, uh, I can go up here, I can create a new layer, and then I can drag it all the way down underneath the first layer. So say I wanted that, that line to go behind these structures here. Well, now it does, you know. And it really depends on how uh, opaque you make uh, your work. And uh, you have a lot of control over that with Sketchbook. But uh, if you make it super opaque, you can go behind this stuff and nobody will ever know the difference. The other thing I can do, so say like right there, uh, it's, it's over the, the little beak structure. Well, I can go back and just erase that one layer that's kind of overlapping where I don't want it to. And now everything is, is right where I want it to be. That could be interesting right there. So... So like I said, this isn't going to be a super long one, but uh, I'm kind of liking the, the way this is going. So we're going to spend a little time on it here. I will have a sped up portion of this. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe you can just sit here with me the whole time. If you enjoy this, then you can just click through the video. Uh, I'm really, like I said, I'm kind of digging the way this is turning out here and uh, you know just when you're doing this stuff don't try to live up to anybody else's expectations just do your thing you know I don't like that line you know don't try to uh, impress anybody other than yourself if you're gonna start on this stuff you really got to develop that uh, that sense where you are doing this for yourself and uh, you don't really care what anybody else thinks about it I'm sorry I keep drinking my Mountain Dews but that's kind of my life's blood there if anybody has been around me or knows me so we got this little design right here I think we need some more feathery type things here and uh, so now we got to decide are we done with this are we going to add some more stuff to it are we going to texture it up a little bit and I think we need a little texture to this thing so again this is a uh, these are shortcuts don't get me wrong I could sit here and add all these textures in by hand and spend all day on this but I really just don't want to I don't know if you can call it lazy uh, they have these awesome textures uh, there's a few of them that I really like and if if you follow my stuff you're gonna see some of these textures on a lot of my paintings and like I said, I, I'm not worried if uh, if somebody doesn't like the fact that I use a textured brush. Uh, because it's the same effect that you would get if you were doing traditional artwork and you were using some kind of a textured brush. Uh, I just really enjoy using them. I love the way they come out. And it's, a, it's kind of a faster way for me to get these things done because... Like I said, I don't spend a whole lot of time. I, and I think that, honestly, it's more uh, it's more my style. It's not, it's not my technique. It's not my uh, prowess with a, with a stylus or a paintbrush. It's, a, it's just kind of my technique that, that brings people back. And kind of the visions that I, I put on the, the uh, screen. I think folks uh, really dig that. So, I uh, hope they do anyway. It, and it's just kind of my own weird stuff. Like I said, I was a big fan of Heavy Metal Magazine when I was a kid. And, uh, man, some of the stuff I saw in there. Uh, 
blew my mind, kind of made me who I am, uh, because growing up here in the backwoods of Arkansas, uh, to all of a sudden come across the heavy metal magazine where you're seeing all this crazy, gory, bloody, nasty, nude stuff in the magazine, uh, was awesome, and then you realize that those are some really, really awesome stories in there. And, and it's the kind of stories like you're not going to find in your typical Marvel comic book. And believe me, I'm one of the biggest Marvel geeks out there. I love everything about Marvel. Uh, and if uh, i got to put up with Mickey Mouse to get to get all the stuff that I've waited for years to see on TV that's I'm good with that but anyway so uh, heavy metal like that stuff you would see in there was just you know in that late 70s early 80s time frame uh, it was just awesome uh, to see that kind of stuff so this background is pure white right now we're going to change it up a little bit because when I go in here and adjust my uh, contrast in the in the vignette on here it'll uh it'll kind of make an effect in the back and uh, you'll kind of see what i'm talking about here in a minute uh, and then the other good uh, texture or effect that i use a lot is this glow effect and uh, the reason i like it is because i can i can bring out the things i want to bring out Kind of adds a little extra dimension. I want that to almost kind of look like a light coming out of there. And there. And I'm doing this on the uh, that very bottom layer that we were uh, looking at, and that's why it's kind of just coming out from behind this. And you can see all these little ghost marks and stuff in here and uh, that's what I was talking about like some people will spend hours and hours cleaning all that up I really don't care about that stuff I mean it is what it is it's it's just not I'm just not into perfection I'm just into what I'm feeling at the time so we're gonna put just a little bit of a hint of some eyes in here and the one thing that I have really tried to work on the most is my eyes and the expressions that uh, I put into these things. So we're going to hit a few of these highlights. I kind of want that. Yeah, there we go. So I'm not sure how long we've been going here. Uh, 28 minutes. I told you it'd be about half an hour. Uh, I'm on the home stretch here. Uh, and I will show you just a couple more things that I do to touch these up. So, you know, that looks pretty good right there. But uh, I really, I don't, I don't know if it's from uh, kind of working on some photography or whatever but I really love playing with the contrast and the hues of these things after I get them done and uh, again I've done the art this is my drawing uh, and now I'm gonna go play with the contrast and hues and we're gonna see what we can make pop out I don't like that that's kind of yeah there we go all right so for that and i'm not sure how this screen setup is going to work but we're going to find out here so first uh yeah let me screw this all up first things first is we're going to save this uh i don't know we're going to call it like a bird skull thing i don't know 
and uh, then there's another program that I use uh, it's called Fotor and I really really love the effects and the uh, the editing tools you have with Fotor and uh, so we're going to bring that up and I'll kind of see where my uh, where my lines are here well you can kind of see it it's kind of cut off uh, but we're going to do it anyway uh, so they've got a lot of built-in effects like I can go in here and just start playing and, and let the, the system do it all for me and sometimes what I do is I'll, I'll go through here and kind of find the one I like the best and then I'll start uh, kind of manipulating it from there I really love this precious time effect here this one that I'm, we're looking at uh, but I don't know if it's right for this uh, let's see here Sparta and us. and the thing is like I can change any of these uh, even if it looks too dark when you're looking at it you can go back and change it so this one's pretty dark but I'm really liking where that's going it gives it that nice almost like a crow look to it so we're going to use this and then I'm going to adjust a couple of things here Now, uh, all I'm doing right here is uh, playing with the hue and uh, the temperature and the sharpness and the contrast and saturation and all that fun stuff. I don't want this to be colorful or anything. I like it, uh, but I do like kind of giving it that green kind of tint to it. I don't know. It's just kind of my thing. It almost makes me, uh, gives it like a tattoo effect almost. So that's way too dark. That looks good. Yeah. All right. So then we'll save it here, and uh, we'll kind of—I'll show you the difference between uh, before and after I've adjusted this, and you, you'll see it's pretty dramatic. Uh, I'm gonna call this crow crow skull thing. I don't know. We'll we'll touch it up a little bit more before I post it so here we are back in sketchbook and this is my original and you can see it's kind of dark uh it's kind of got that curl look to it uh, but then when i go and i went and adjusted uh my artwork we ended up with it looking like this so pretty dramatic difference right and then as always I turn off the uh, symmetry and I'm going to go down here in the bottom and we're going to sign this thing and of course I've got the glow on and not my brush because I'm an idiot let me get back up here to my brush and we're going to sign this in black, of course. That's way too big. That is like, I feel like if Bob Ross like, covered a whole mountain with his freaking signature. We want to just, yeah, there we go. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will have this posted up on DeviantArt, and I just wanted to kind of give you a quick behind the, the scenes look at how I get this artwork done. Uh, there's a lot of things on here that you could go back and touch up and fix up and make it look great and wonderful, and uh, if anybody wants to take this work and, and do great and wonderful things with it, then by all means, have at it. Uh, but I'll have this posted on DeviantArt. It'll also be on my Instagram page. Both of those are American OG Song. I'll see you in the next video.